Hey everybody, welcome back to my LEGO City Room where I have an extra display set up to talk about and demonstrate some really good things you can do with the new 2021 LEGO City road plates. In a previous video I showed you this little table over here which just shows you all of the first wave of sets that include the new road plates. Now we're going to be looking at this extension over here and astute viewers will immediately see where I'm going with this. Let me very quickly summarize the most important things you need to know to start with here. Traditionally, a lot of LEGO building has occurred on base plates. Unlike regular LEGO bricks, these are flexible, thin pieces of plastic with no attachment points on the undersides. They've used these as the basis for some terrain builds, for buildings, including the most recent of the much-loved Creator Expert modular building series, and they've also used base plates for their road systems. Now they have changed the styles of roads a number of times through the decades, but ultimately you can use the roads with the buildings and they line up just fine. However, there is a little problem with base plates for Lego. They're technically not in system. They have a strange thickness of one half the thickness of a standard Lego plate or one sixth the thickness of a standard brick. So half of a regular plate and that's an oddity and also you can't attach things from the underside that makes it difficult to actually build with these you can build on top of them but not with them the new road system that lego came out with and started to to populate throughout the city line in 2021 is in system you can attach things to the underside so you can stack these you can make elevated roadways you can make bridges and such and it has a standard thickness that is based on the thickness of plates. So in this case, it's the thickness of two plates or a plate and a set of tiles. So this works really well with a lot of things, but not necessarily with the old base plates, which are just a slightly different size. And when you line them up together, you end up with a one sixth of a, of a brick thickness of difference, which is very awkward. Now let's get into some solutions. As you see here, I have a line of the new road plates and I have a modular building and the alignment is perfect between the two. You have a nice little curb that is exactly the height of one tile. To accomplish this, all I did was put a spacer underneath the building and that spacer is one of these. It's a 10 by 10 inch square of foam core. This is the type of stuff that kids use to do their displays for science fairs and stuff like that for art projects. It costs uh, about 50 cents for this amount of material. You typically get it in large sheets and then you just have to cut it down. So here's an example of an original sheet of the stuff that I used and these are available in all sorts of different colors with white being the most common. The most important thing here is that you look for sheets that are listed at a thickness of 3 16ths of an inch. This one says five millimeters on it, but I think it's not exactly five millimeters. The imperial measure is actually a little bit closer, and that's what ensures that you're gonna get exactly what you need to adapt between the thickness of a base plate and the thickness of two plates. This next modular building is also adapted to the correct height, but uses a different technique. Under this one is a giant studded plate, and here's exactly what I use. It's not a base plate. It's an actual plate, and this is not a Lego product. It's better than what Lego makes because it is an actual plate with the full thickness, not the out of thickness uh, style of a base plate. And these can be connected to from the underside. I got this off Amazon from a company that makes them called Strictly Bricks, and I'll leave a link to their storefront in the video description that will be an affiliate link, but I am not sponsored by them. I have no connection to them whatsoever. I've bought these in the past to use them for my minifigure displays. Now, if you don't want to use a non-Lego product, that's perfectly fine. All you need is something that is the thickness of a plate. So, assuming that this is the area where the building is going to go, just take some plates, lay them on the ground, use those as spacers. That's all you need, just the thickness of a plate. So these can be loose or you can attach them to the surface below or to your modular building itself to the underside of its base plate using some blue tack or some non-hardening uh, plastic modeling clay. I recommend something without dye in it, something white or otherwise uncolored just to make sure that uh, no color stays behind. But that's it. That is the exact spacing that you need to get the exact same result. Here it's not the thickness of just the the plate itself, the standard thickness there, but also the height of the studs with the logo on top. All of that works together to get you the height that you need. 
Next in line, this is one of the cheaper LEGO Creator 3-in-1 builds, just an alternate version of one of the recent ones they put out. These are in better shape to begin with because they've always been built in system. They've always been built on plates, not base plates. And thus, in the past, these have been incompatible with each other. Once we get this up to system by putting something underneath to adapt it, this just needs an additional layer of plates to be added beneath it. So I've added red plates to make it really obvious what I've done here. And I didn't put too many of them in because I didn't really need it. I also extended the front to give it that sidewalk to be compatible with what the modular buildings have established as their system for a sidewalk. Because Lego has basically made it very, very clear that in their world, sidewalks are built with the buildings and not with the streets. I personally have preferred in the past with road base plates to put my sidewalks on the street plates themselves, but Lego clearly <laughs> has been not doing that. They put the sidewalks with the buildings and they're continuing that trend with the cheaper, well, they're actually overpriced, but relatively cheaper uh, Lego city sets that are using those parts. So I'm going to stick with that system here and have consistency so you can see how the height of the curb is staying the same and the style of the sidewalk is also staying the same. So this was easy to take care of. And similarly, this is an older Lego city building from long before they had these new road plates, but they again were already built on regular plates, not base plates. Thus, all I needed to do here to adapt was add some thickness. So once again, I've used the red to make it super obvious. Uh, here, I just had to elevate the entire thing up by two plates and again, extend the front to give it the sidewalk. Now, obviously you can see a little bit of the red peeking through at the interface between the road and the building and the plates underneath of it. To avoid that, you simply just don't use super bright red like I did for the sake of illustration. Just use the same color as the road. So use the dark gray there, or you could use the, the, the light gray. You know, it's entirely your choice. However, it's a little bit more difficult to deal with that with the modular buildings. If you see that, like here, I can see just a little bit of green showing through. This has a green base plate underneath. An easy way to help fix that is to tie multiple plates together. Base plates, being as flexible as they are, warp very easily. They don't hold their shape. So when you put things on top, they get pulled up towards the corners. So instead of having your tiles end at the end of the base plate for the sidewalk or the curb, just have a tile go all the way across that. It'll tie the things together and help to fight against that warping. There's another thing that you may need to do, though, depending upon exactly what system you use to create your elevation underneath here, or maybe if you get some uh, foam, if you're using this foam core material, you may get some that's not exactly the thickness you need. There is variation. It's not like a scientific thing where there's 100% consistency, but if there's a little bit of difference and it's annoying you that you can see that little bit of color showing through, get yourself a ream of this stuff. It's heavy cardstock. Don't go to a specialty craft shop and buy one or two pieces of this. Get a whole ream of it from a stationery store, office supply store. You can get it online. It's super cheap. Just find whatever is the heaviest weight of heavy cardstock paper and a whole ream. It's, it's like a stack like that. And then you'll have a supply for your entire lifetime. Cut up some of it, put it underneath the roads just as big shims to elevate your roads a little bit. And that tiny, tiny little bit of color will disappear. Now here's one more important example of an adaptation between the old base plate system and the new road plate systems. This is just a very terrible, old, basic, simple custom build that I did for a police kiosk years and years ago. But I'm using it as an example of an older building built upon a base plate. So Lego has used these base plates in even city sets in the past and town and going back many decades where, you know, you might want to keep all of that together, especially they have some older base plates that had unique prints on them that you just can't replicate by other means. By using the foam core 3 16th inch in thickness, that gets you to the exact height that you need, for example, for driveways to be at street level with the new road plates. So the same method that we used for very, very cheaply adapting Modular buildings also works for older, smaller builds that are on base plates that want to be at the same height as the street. 
Over here, I have the most basic brute force adaptation between the new road system and the old road system. And all I did here was just put the two up against each other and I used a couple of the ramp pieces that are included with these road plate sets to allow cars to come right down to the level of the original old base plates. And cars can roll down those pretty smoothly. Like there, you know, there is, there is a little bit of a bump there, but you can just barely feel it. So this will work. Now you notice there is a difference in color here. Uh, that's one of the, the secrets that proponents of these old base plates don't like to tell you about. They change color over time. It's very annoying. They don't all change color at the same time. And eventually, someday, if you have a city full of these, you're going to have a patchwork of different colors of gray. They started out looking a little bit darker than this here and actually very close to this. However, there is a definite difference in surface finish between these two, and there's nothing you can do to change that without getting out some emery paper and doing a whole lot of very fine wet sanding and good luck dealing with these stripes. But yeah, there is more glossiness here, but this just shows you a couple possibilities for going between these two. So if I wanted to bring some of these new road plates into my city, I would not need to take out all of my existing base plates. I can just adapt between them and make things work, make things work for the cars, make things work for the minifigures. Here I just went around a corner to adapt things a little bit. And over here, it's just showing kind of ends. So the crosswalk just happens to be here. Maybe not the best spacing, but of course you can space things out however you want using just plates. Like this little corner here just has a four by six plate beneath it. It can work. I'm gonna change gears here a little bit, which is almost a pun because we're looking at cars. But a lot of people have asked me about how well different vehicles will work on the new road system and what ones won't. One of the biggest questions that I get most frequently is, will the old Speed Champions cars, the six stud wide ones, work on the new plates? And the answer is mostly yes. This here happens to be one of the widest that they ever made because it's got this really, really wide deep dish wheel setup on it, which is awkward, but that will fit. It'll just barely fit. It overlaps the center uh, a divider a bit, but it will work and will pass by other vehicles. Most of the Speed Champions cars have been more of this size and, and shape. This is a city one here, but they're built to the same standard. Six studs wide, plus the width of fenders on both sides, and those can pass each other just fine, even if you're only using the 16 stud width of a single row of these plates. However, the way that LEGO has been doing it with their new city sets is adding yet another stud worth of width to each lane. So where they connect to the plates, there's an additional lane here, you can, or an additional width of, of tile here. So just from right there to right there is the width of the 16 stud road plate, but then they go farther than that to give you a little bit of gutter, they got drainage there. So this is actually an 18 stud width, which gives you even more passing room. Without that, you can get many six stud wide trucks. Again, six stud doesn't matter what type of vehicle it is uh, to pass each other. Here we do have the benefit of an additional uh, additional tile worth of width off to the side. Some larger trucks with big and wide mirrors cannot pass each other, however, within that space. So what happens when we want larger vehicles to fit onto our roads? Previously, for example, these gigantic gigantic, huge new uh, Speed Champions cars would just barely work on the old road base plates. I mean, uh, I'm going right out to the edge there. And if this, this had some, uh, <laughs> this had some mirrors on it, you know, we're, we're getting pretty close there, but technically it'll work. Forget about doing that on the new plates though. That is just not going to happen unless you adapt and use the ability with the new plates to basically choose your own destiny, create whatever you want. You can add width, like for instance, here I've done it the simplest possible way. I just doubled it up. So here I have these giant roads by just going with the width of two full plates. Now that does get expensive to be sure, but it is something that now is possible. This actually makes the Speed Champions cars look comfortable on the road rather than being uh, really, really cramped like they were on the old road. So you can really choose your destiny in that way. But if you don't want to go this far, check it out. 
The new plates are in system. It's regular Lego, so you can extend them however you want. If you want to go with an 18 stud wide overall road with two lanes, you can do that right here. If you want to go out to 20 studs, you can do that right here. If you want to go out to 24 studs with no studs whatsoever exposed on top, just smooth surface, you can do that. You can extend that out to 32 studs, which is the width of a traditional base plate, which makes it easier to fit into most cities that have modular buildings, for example. And then you can customize the sides. Like here, I've got some greenery. You can curve in, you can add some, some uh, manhole covers in the middle if you want. You can even put like a, a ramp, I put a little wheelchair access ramp over here on the side. It's all possible because it's just regular Lego. You can use regular plates and tiles and customize it to your heart's content. How about a green median, for example, rather than just a basic stripe? That can add a nice splash of color down a main avenue. What if instead of these gargantuan Speed Champions cars, you've got traditional regular sizes of cars, but you do have this much space to put in a nice road? Hmm, that looks like space enough for two lanes there. And in fact, you can very easily make that happen with the new system. Just put your lines in different places and create whatever kind of median that you want down the middle, concrete, green, or whatever. And there you go. At the end of the day, there are a ton of things you can do with the road plates, both new and old. You can make them work together, switching between them. You can stick to just the old ones. You can switch to just the new ones. It's entirely up to you. Think a little bit outside the box. Think of different possibilities of what you want and really consider whether the new system or the old system or a combination of the two can make what you want happen. Truthfully, in this video, I've barely scratched the surface of what you can do with these. They can be used for elevated roadways, for large avenues, highways, uh, parking lots, airport runways, hangars. Uh, you could run them vertically like this and create walls with them. Turn it around. That's an interesting texture. Perhaps you can use that for a wall surface. There are many things that people are going to come up with to do with these. Because they're in system, they're very easy to use. I'm not trying to debate costs or which is better here, new or old. I'm heavily invested in the old system myself. It has worked perfectly fine. I wish that, the, that these were available when I first started doing my city because I definitely would have gone with them then. But now, as it is, I'll be looking for opportunities to use these where they can be potentially better, allow me to do additional things. So keep an open mind and I hope that this video was helpful for you. Look around, look at other people's videos, look around on Flickr, look as many places as you can to get more ideas, have fun with it, and I'll talk to you again soon.